With the rise of small form factor cases in PC builds, low profile coolers are entering the limelight, but how well do they perform compared to more typical tower coolers? Howdy howdy guys, Pond Shadow here, and today we'll be answering that question by taking a look at the Shadow Rock LP, a low profile cooler from Be Quiet. Thanks to Be Quiet for sending this over for review, and let's get started. The Shadow Rock LP is a low-profile cooler released back in early 2015 for around $45. US It's compatible with AM4, LGA1151, and LGA2066 sockets, and is rated for a 130 watt TDP. Being a low-profile cooler, the Shadow Rock LP is specifically designed to fit into small enclosures like Micro ATX Slim Towers or Mini ITX cases. The box has all the details you can expect from Be Quiet, including the rated TDP right on the front of the box, something I've always appreciated from them. The back has the major features listed, along with the specs for the cooler and fan. Inside the box right on top is the Pure Wings 2 fan, the instructions and packing list, and underneath that is the cooler itself. This is actually the first low profile cooler I've worked with and I was immediately surprised at how short it is, especially without the fan. Finally, at the bottom of the box, you'll find all the mounting hardware like the fan clips, backplate, and screws. The heatsink is fundamentally similar to a tower cooler but folded over, an array of aluminum fins supported by copper heat pipes. The base is a near mirror finish and comes with thermal paste pre applied, so you won't have to mess with trying to use the right amount. The four heat pipes are 6mm in diameter, and two of them wrap around to support a second, smaller set of fins below the main array. The top of the cooler has a brushed aluminum top plate with caps over the four heat pipes, a simple but nice touch to improve the look of the cooler. The 120mm Pure Wings 2 fan runs between 300 and 1500 RPM, utilizes a rifle bearing, and does not include any LEDs, just be quiet's usual all black design. Overall, the Shadow Rock LP is 134mm wide, 122mm long, and only 75.4mm tall. That's quite a bit shorter than a standard PCIe bracket. To install the Shadow Rock LP on AM4 systems, the first step is to remove the plastic cover over the base. Just make sure to not touch it since it already has thermal paste applied. Next, you slide the AM4 bridge between the base and the fins. It has some ridges to keep it correctly lined up once it's in. Next, you attach the two AM4 hooks to the bridge. This part requires a bit of dexterity because you need to hold the cooler, hold the bridge in place, hold the AM4 hook on the bridge, and then get a screw threaded through the hook. If you slide the bridge out a little bit, it makes the whole process a lot easier. Be Quiet does include a funny little wrench to hold and tighten the screws, but I found it a lot easier to just use a screwdriver through the openings in the heatsink. You only need to tighten these AM4 hooks a few turns, leaving them loose and wobbly so you can get them hooked onto the motherboard. Once you seat the cooler and make sure the hooks are hooked, you alternate tightening both screws until it's all snug. With the screws tightened down, the cooler is very firmly attached. The last step of installation is attaching the fan and plugging it in. The clips hook onto the front of the fan and then press into a channel on the side of the heatsink, pretty standard for most coolers these days. For most CPU coolers, I recommend installing them outside the case, but for a low profile cooler like this, it's pretty much required. Fortunately, it was a lot simpler than I expected, owing to Be Quiet's use of the existing AIM-4 backplate and latch. Once the cooler's installed, you can see it fits into a very tiny footprint. It's shorter than a standard graphics card, and it stays completely clear of the RAM slot, so clearance isn't an issue. My test bench is a Ryzen 3 1200 overclocked to 4.1 GHz at 1.35 volts on an MSI B350M Gaming Pro motherboard with 8GB of DDR4-2400 memory. The graphics card is a passively cool GT1030 from MSI, and thanks to Seasonic for providing the power supply, an 850 watt Focus Plus Gold which can run passive under low load. Because the GT1030 and Seasonic 850FX run passive cooling and don't produce noise, the only sound coming from this system is from the CPU cooler itself. Low temperatures are taken with the CPU running a Prime95 stress test, temperatures are allowed to stabilize then averaged over 3 runs, and cooling results are reported as deltas, degrees above ambient temperature. First we'll look at the idle results. These are the noise levels and temperature deltas with no programs running and the fans at their minimum RPM. As you can expect from their name, Be Quiet does create very quiet coolers and the Shadow Rock LP is no exception. The fan doesn't stop completely, still running at around 300 RPM, but it's slow enough to be below the ambient noise level in my studio. It also keeps the CPU at a reasonably low temperature, though temperature delta at idle is included mostly for curiosity's sake. Now we'll look at the max cooling results. These measurements are taken under load with the fans at full speed to show the upper limit of their cooling. Honestly, the Shadow Rock LP performs better than I expected here. I figured, being a low profile cooler, it would be making some significant sacrifices in noise or cooling in order to keep such a tiny footprint, but it didn't. In fact, it was very similar to the much taller, upright Pure Rock Slim, slightly louder, but also slightly cooler. Next, we'll take a look at the RPM versus PWM graph to show the granularity of control you can achieve with the fan. 
The Shadow Rock LP in orange shows, as is often the case, a small section of the PWM range is cut off. Anything from 0 to 20% just runs at the minimum RPM. Above that, however, it does keep a very straight line up to 100%. Now here's the Delta C versus RPM graph to show whether the cooler is limited by airflow or by heat transfer. A leveling off at higher RPM indicates the cooler is limited by heat transfer, while a consistent drop in delta indicates airflow is the limiting factor. In most cases, tower coolers and AIOs are limited by heat transfer, while top-down and low-profile coolers like this one are limited by airflow. As expected, the Shadow Rock LP looks like it has quite a bit more cooling capacity if it weren't for the limitation of the fan blowing almost directly on the motherboard, blocking airflow. A higher RPM fan could overcome this to some extent, but that would come at the cost of significantly increased noise. Now here's the most important graph for performance, temperature delta versus noise. This answers the fundamental question for any CPU cooler. How loud is it, and how well does it cool? Here you can see the striking similarity between the Shadow Rock LP and the Pure Rock Slim, purely in terms of performance. Other than the Shadow Rock LP extending slightly louder and slightly cooler at the tail end, the two coolers are practically within the margin of measurement error. Of course, these are only two samples, but it appears that a typical 120mm low profile cooler like this is roughly equivalent in performance to a typical 92mm tower cooler. Now here's the chart of cooler scores, which are essentially how close the cooler gets to a hypothetical perfect cooler with a zero degree delta and zero decibels of noise. You can think of this as a metric to compare coolers running at their optimal speed, balanced between cooling performance and noise level. Unsurprisingly, the Shadow Rock LP falls behind here because it's a low profile cooler. You can still get decent performance from a low profile cooler, much better than any stock cooler at least, but some performance is necessarily sacrificed to fit into small form factor cases. In terms of price to performance though, the Shadow Rock LP actually falls in the middle of the pack. It's relatively inexpensive and performs decently, so it's still a good value for its use case. And keep in mind, it's the only low profile cooler on this list. On the plus side, installation was a lot easier than I expected. Low profile coolers by design block most of the socket, so some careful thought had to go into making it this easy to install. Second, and this is a very functional benefit, the Shadow Rock LP directly cools the VRM for the CPU and, to an extent, all the surface level components on the motherboard. This might be the most underappreciated aspect of low profile coolers because VRMs, especially those with low quality or poorly designed heatsinks, can get extremely hot without direct airflow. As for the cons, there's really only one, and it's pretty minor. The fan clips don't have tabs on the side to make them easier to hook onto the heatsink. Other than that, honestly, I don't think there's much to say. Yeah, it doesn't perform as well as tower coolers, but that's part of the territory. Low profile coolers fit where tower coolers can't. I guess it would be nice for the fan to have a fluid dynamic bearing instead of a rifle bearing. FDBs tend to be more reliable and a little quieter than rifle bearings, but the difference is pretty minute. That and the Shadow Rock series is Be Quiet's mid-range. I wouldn't really expect everything to be the absolute best of the best. To answer the question, are low profile coolers worth it? As long as you're getting it for the right purpose, this one is. If you have a decently sized micro ATX case or a bulky ATX mid tower, there's really no performance or practical reason to get a low profile cooler instead of a tower cooler. Personally, I think it's a neat look with a huge fan directly over the CPU socket, but that's probably not why you'd get a low profile cooler. You'd get one because you're doing a mini ITX build or trying to cram a decently spec PC into a slim case. For those scenarios, your options are sticking with the stock cooler, good luck if it's an Intel build, or getting a proper low profile cooler. And in that case, the Shadow Rock LP is a really good choice. Click the link in the description to pick one up for yourself. Hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions on the Shadow Rock LP, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video.